I'll tell you a tale which shows the power of a smile. For once upon a time there was a king, and this king, well, he liked to do the sorts of things that kings like to do in fairy tales. And when, to his great delight, a baby princess was born, that king, he went out of the castle and he planted one hundred oak trees. Yes, he planted them from the seeds, those little acorns. And the king said, when my daughter is old enough to marry, why, these oak trees will be tall and mighty and fully grown. Now, if you know anything about oak trees, you will say, oh, no, 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 the king's made a mistake here. Why, it takes about 200 years before an oak tree is tall and fully grown. Uh, but do not forget that this is a fairy tale. And so it was when, just 20 years later, the princess was old enough to marry. Those oak trees had grown so tall, so mighty. Yes, it looked as if they had been growing for 200 years. And then the king said, any man who wants to marry my daughter must first come and pull up one of these trees. And any man who tries and fails, he shall lose his head. Not the sort of thing that kings say in a fairy tale. Now, if you have ever heard an old tale with a princess, <laughs> you will know there's got to be a poor young man. And so there was in my story. He was a woodcutter who lived on the far side of the forest. Now, that woodcutter, poor though he was, mm, handsome and strong he was too. And when he heard of the king's proclamation, what, that pull up a 20-year-old oak tree? Ha! That's the sort of thing I can do any day of the week. I shall go and try my fortune. And off he went, walking through the forest. Now the young man had not walked very far before he walked by an ant's nest. An ant's nest which was in danger of being swept away by the waters of a stream uh, for a 20-year-old oak tree had fallen into it and the water had been diverted. Well, the woodcutter, he saw the danger the ants were in and out of the kindness of his heart, he bent down, he picked up that 20-year-old oak tree and tossed it aside. Well, of course, the ants, they came out of the nest led by their queen to say, thank you. And if ever you need our help, here, take this magic pine needle, just blow upon it and we'll be there to help you. The woodcutter wondered whether he'd ever need help from creatures so small, but he was far too polite to say anything about that. So he merely thanked the ants, took the magic pine needle, put it into his pocket and walked on his way. It was not long before he came to a second creature that needed his help. It was a small bird caught in a trap. Well, out of the kindness of his heart, the woodcutter released the bird, who said, thank you for your help. And if you ever need help yourself, here, take this magic feather and blow upon it. Then you will see before you whatever you wish to see. Hmm. Woodcutter thought that would be very useful indeed, so he thanked the bird, took the feather, put it into his pocket and went on his way. And you will not be surprised when I tell you, soon he came to a third creature that needed his help. It was a small mouse that had fallen into a jar and could not get out. Well, out of the kindness of his heart, the woodcutter helped the mouse out, who said, 
Thank you for your help. And if you ever need help from me, here, take this magic grain, just blow upon it, and I shall be there to help you. Hmm. The woodcutter, he thanked the mouse, he took that magic grain of wheat, put it into his pocket, and on he walked to the castle of the king. The castle surrounded by 120-year-old oaks, which had grown so tall, so mighty. They looked as if they had been growing there for 200 years. And from each one, there hung the head of a man who had tried and failed. The woodcutter was just turning to leave when he saw, looking through the window in the castle, the princess. And not only was she so beautiful, the smile on her lips gave him strength. Strength which seemed to course through his body, seemed to swell his muscles. He stepped into that grove. He put his arms around the largest tree, pulled it up by the roots and tossed it aside. Just as the king came out to see what was happening. And the woodcutter walked to him. Your Majesty, see the tree. I have come for your daughter's hand in marriage. Well, the king looked at the woodcutter in his dirty, ragged clothes. He was not the sort of son-in-law the king had, had in mind. And so the king did what kings can so easily do. And not only in folk tales, uh, he changed the rules. Any man who wants to marry my daughter, th there are some other tests which first must be completed. Um, and failure, of course. You will lose your head. Come with me. And the king took the woodcutter to a great barn, inside which there was a great pile of grain. Unfortunately, the grain has become rather mixed. We have grains of wheat, we have grains of oats, we have grains of barley. <laughs> By the end of the night, they must be separated into three piles. Otherwise, and the king locked the door. But the woodcutter, he remembered not only the smile on the lips of the princess, he remembered what was in his pocket and he took out that magic pine needle. And there they came, streaming in thousands upon thousands upon thousands of ants under the doors through the cracks in the wall. And they came, led by the queen, who said, we know what to do. And they did it. And by the time the king came back the next morning, as you know, yes, three piles of grain. And the king, mm, wheat, oats and barley. Uh, but there is one more task already, which you must complete, unless you wish to lose your head. The royal rabbits. Now, I have 100, and today they must be taken out to graze in the woods and the fields. Bring them back in the evening. One is lost. You know what will happen. And the woodcutter stepped out of the barn, and there, in front of the castle, drawn up in a line, were the rabbits, 100 waiting to be marched off to the woods and the fields. And march them off, the woodcutter did. And you know what rabbits are like. As soon as they came to the woods and the fields, everywhere, they just disappeared. But at the end of the day, the woodcutter remembered not only the smile on the lips of the princess, he remembered what was in his pocket, that magic feather. And whatever he wished for, there it was. 100 rabbits drawn up, waiting to be marched back to the castle where the king had to count them. 
97, 98, 99, 100. <laughs> but there is one more task which you must complete. <laughs> and the king smiled, for he had taken his precautions. The ring on the princess's finger, <laughs> that I must have now. For the king's precautions were that he had locked his daughter in a room high up in a tower, a tower surrounded by seven walls. And before the gates of those seven walls, there were seven soldiers. And the king smiled. But so did the woodcutter, and he reached for that magic grain of wheat. And there, there before him was the little mouse. I know what to do. And that mouse so small, beneath the doors, through the bars, he went up to the princess's room, who was waiting there to give him the ring. And so soon it was. The woodcutter had that ring in his hand and could march to the king. Your daughter. Well, said the king, unfortunately, I have just been told by her that she does not wish to marry you. But a father does not always know what is in his daughter's head, uh, much less in her heart. And he did not know that the princess had already whispered to the mouse, tell the woodcutter, he's the only man for me. And so the woodcutter could put his hand into his pocket, draw out once more that magic feather. <sighs> and what he wished for, stood before him, the princess, not only so pretty, but with a smile on her face as she stepped towards him, taking his hand in hers. And the strength which came from that smile seemed to swell the woodcutter's muscles as he reached for his axe, which he swung and forth as he looked at the king. The king who said, very well, marry you may. And marry they did, and happy they were. A tale, you see, which tells us that even when there's someone out there trying to cut off your head, just remember the smile on the lips of the one you wish to have before you. Oh, and then you can have the strength to live happily ever after. And that is the end of my tale. <laughs>